Every job is complicated. Each one has its own nuances. Fortunately, there's a discipline taking care of all of us. Ergonomics. What is ergonomics? How does it benefit us? And what does the Godfather have to do with all of this? What's up, Digmates? I'm Dominique, Head of Communications at Digma, and today we'll be talking about the essentials of ergonomics. Let's start with some basic questions. What is ergonomics? According to its etymology, ergonomics is the natural rules of work. Of course, this doesn't give much information, but don't worry, we'll come back to that later. Who started ergonomics? Worshus... Wait, I can't pronounce that. Can we get like a... So, Wojciech Jastrzebowski was a Polish scientist, inventor, and professor, and he created the word in his 1857 essay, this. Or, the outline of ergonomics, science of work based on the truths taken from natural science. The genesis of modern ergonomics is more recent. In 1949, Highwell Murrell, a British psychologist, introduced the term to the English language and set the tone for the modern discipline. Not only that, but he also founded the Ergonomics Society, known nowadays as the Chartered Institute of Ergonomics and Human Factors. Why do we need ergonomics? Nobody's gonna know. They're gonna know. How would they know? How would they know? I can't. I can't. I just, I can't. Oh my god! Is someone still going to dispute the need for ergonomics and job safety improvements? That leads to my next question. How can ergonomics succeed over humans, let's just say, lack of good sense or judgment? Ergonomics achieves its goals through experts in different fields, such as psychology, physiology, or engineering, with one task in mind, making the workplace a better environment with a positive impact not only on the person developing the task, but also on the society as a whole. While we've set the frame, let's take a closer look at the picture. The International Ergonomics Association defines three broad domains of ergonomics. Physical ergonomics probably the most known domain. It involves anthropometry, which is essentially the study of different body shapes and sizes and how this relates to the work environment and tools. Biomechanics. These bodies do actions and these actions have consequences. Standing up for long hours, working with heavy loads or sitting for eight hours in a chair can be very harmful. Biomechanics studies how our body performs such actions and seeks the optimal way to do them. Environmental physics. It's pointless to study the body and its movements if we don't consider the space where the work takes place. So here is where noise, light, heat, cold, radiation, vision, hearing, and other factors are taken into consideration. Next, remember her? Yes, we encountered this lady while talking about keyboard denting. There might be some relation there. Have you ever felt incredibly tired but utterly happy after a day of hard work? Yes! That's a good example of how the mind can supersede the body when it comes to feel satisfaction. It can happen the other way around too. That's why keeping our minds healthy is as important as keeping our bodies safe. And that's where cognitive ergonomics kicks in to help us. This domain focuses on psychological effects and implications of work, such as skill, learning, error management, mental workload, decision-making, human stress, human-computer interaction, stagnation problems, performance issues, and many, many more. Work involves interaction, and interaction can lead into problems that need to be addressed. Organizational ergonomics focuses on the collective problems that emerge in the workplace, because most of the time, solving a complicated situation will involve more than just one person. Aspects like communication, crew resource management, design of working times, teamwork, cooperation, quality management, group behavior, and conflict resolution are what this domain focuses on. Well, we've set the foundations, and I'm glad you're still here listening to me, because I don't know about you, but this all felt pretty dense. So let's just try to understand it with some practical examples. Let's check these images and rate how ergonomic they are. First, we have Tony Stark and Iron Man. All right, so this looks like the perfect outfit to develop heavy work. The armor suits its purpose to perfection, avoids injuries, helps to perform heavy tasks, and has a great communication system, don't you think? Okay, then why does this man decide to work in these conditions? Poor lighting, a chair with no backrest, and don't get me started on the height of the table. I mean, 
I thought this man was a genius. Sorry, Mr. Stark, you might be Iron Man, but you better iron out your environmental ergonomics. I give this a 5 out of 10. The ergonomic bottle. You all might be thinking, oh, this can't be ergonomic. They use it for commercial purposes. How does this bottle help someone develop any kind of work? Well, the Spanish goalkeeper, Santiago Cañizares, might have a different opinion. Back in 2002, Mr. Cañizares was meant to be the starting goalkeeper for the Spanish team in the World Cup held that year in Korea. A few weeks before the event, a bottle of cologne slipped from his hands while he was in the shower. It shattered and one of the shards tore a tendon in the player's foot. As a result, he couldn't attend the World Cup. There's a lesson here. Just think about how important grips and materials are. Ergonomic designs can make big differences. The ergonomic bottle goes up to 7 out of 10. The Mafia For about 60 years, five families ruled New York's underworld. Bookmakers, smugglers, corrupt unions, you name it. Everything was a means to make money and to look badass. I'm gonna make him enough where he can refuse. Probably one of the most profitable organizations ever built. Well, I don't know, Paulo Escobar? The catch? Well, it's a pretty dangerous line of work. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Sustainability and safety for your employees outweigh the profits you can make. And as an organization, the mob absolutely fails this test. Two out of 10. Now you can see how most situations can relate to ergonomics. But does that mean we can use the word ergonomics to describe or measure everything? Well, yeah, we can. But we're trying to establish a more concrete meaning of the word. And the last thing we want is to confuse everyone. So let's take a closer look at the method ergonomics uses to tackle the situation. One, identify the problem. Is someone in pain because of their job? Feeling some discomfort? Unhappy? Do you have constant communication issues between departments? Asking these kinds of questions is the first step. Two, plan improvements. Take small steps and start applying measures. During this process, it's important to encourage as much feedback as you can gather from everyone involved. Three, measure progress. Keep track of both the improvements and any unexpected consequences. Applying wrong solutions can be just as harmful as the previous problem. Four, escalate solutions. If measures are working, don't use them only to solve a problem. Apply them in as many areas as possible in order to improve everyone's job. Ergonomics always keeps in mind this process. And that's why we should be more restrictive when we assess that something is ergonomic. For instance, check my teaspoons. The one with the flat handle feels more comfortable and stirring it is slightly easier. But that doesn't make it more ergonomic. Well, probably no one will say so. Yet, we do it to things with a flashier design. For example, look at these cat brushes. Now, probably we'll be more inclined to call the second one ergonomic. It's ergonomic. So it's really good to know the difference between the technical term of ergonomics and its common usage. Let's go for one more example. Let's check the most iconic image of the Mafia. So, the chair has no headrest, which at Don Corleone's age might be a problem. Besides, he's petting the cat over his black tuxedo, not using a tool for it, all the fur is going to be on his clothes, and I think he's still going to attend his daughter's wedding. Tears weren't the only thing shedding that day. Sorry, Don Vito, you're a definitive proof that the Mafia fails any ergonomics test, even on fiction. 4 out of 10. Ergonomics might have become a bit of a buzzword, but here at Digma, we try not to use them lightly. Our products are designed to accommodate the needs of people who work long hours on their computer. We follow the process, keeping in mind the needs of our customers, tracking the progress, and getting feedback from our users. Then, if something goes wrong, we reframe things and try to find new solutions. Yes, it might not be the biggest advancement in the field of ergonomics, but we like to think we play our little part in making things better for you. If we missed anything, don't worry, we have more ergonomics commandments coming for you. Just follow the channel for more content. Let us know if you're interested in any particular topic in the comment section below. And please, please like the video to protect us from mob retaliation. Hope to see you soon. Until then, take care.